Many of you live in states that are unlike California. A lot of you live in countries where they don't have ballot initiatives like this. Um, but we do, and in California, uh, we allow countless millions of dollars to be spent on them. And if you've watched TV in California over the past couple of months, you've probably seen ads around a few of these propositions. And so uh, I've been watching those and noting that the ads are incredibly dishonest about what the ballot initiatives would actually do. And I've been wondering ever since, how are we going to go on some of those? So the ones that I saw the most ads for, there were two. It was Prop 22 and Prop 23. 23 adds requirements for dialysis clinics. You'd have to have doctors um, uh, there and there are certain requirements if you're gonna shut down uh, the office. And they have had so many ads implying that this would be an unbearable burden on these dialysis clinics that have had a lot of problems for a very long time. Years ago, John Oliver had an amazing episode about dialysis uh, clinics. And uh, right now, it's at yes 37 to add those requirements, no 63. So those ads um, which put people who are on dialysis or need dialysis um, in front of your face every moment for literally weeks now, it looks like those worked. And but, but, I mean, the thing got me, it's, it appeared that both sides suggested, and I don't mean to make these people very sick and they need dialysis, but just from watching the ads as a, as a ballot initiative, it struck you that both, both decisions would kill people. Yeah, they were both presented as killing people. Yeah, they're both presented as killing people. And it's another thing why ballot initiatives, I, there is a value to them in some cases, there's no question. But this is an important, complicated issue, mm -hmm. right? That, that uh, I don't know, our elected representatives, they represent us <laughs> uh, in the California Assembly, that maybe they ought to handle these issues, right? I mean, that's the idea of it. But the ballot initiatives, and it makes you know guys like John try to figure this out, he can't possibly do that. I, so, I you know, Adrian, did. she can figure it out, but not this Yahoo. I don't have a law background. <laughs> um, and so there's that. And then 22 was the, the best example. I don't remember the exact breakdown yeah. of the ads for or against, but I believe it was, I think, more than $200 million um, to uh, define app-based drivers as contractors. So for things like Uber and Lyft and other services like this, um, yeah, all like, of these- like, like Grubhub and stuff. Grubhub too, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So all of these ads presented as, if you don't pass this, these extra benefits they're gonna give the drivers won't happen. And they wanna have the freedom to still be contractors. And all of that, and by the way, all the money was coming from those companies, which seemed odd considering yeah. all the people in the ads were drivers. I thought that was so weird. Um, when of course the the proposition was actually stopping um, some reforms that would uh, you know, classify them as actual employees and have the companies actually have an obligation to give them a living wage, give them benefits and things like that. Right now it's a yes 58, no 43. And so it looks like the hundreds of millions of dollars that they spent to pass this that will Invariably, I would assume based on their behavior, they've estimated that it will save them far more than hundreds of millions of dollars. It looks like 22 is going to pass. I, I had a conversation with the two progressives over the course of about an hour this, this weekend. Both of them voted yes, because their experience with drivers was that drivers wanted this and they didn't wanna to be told they have to work eight hours in Pasadena on Tuesday, that the freedom was the whole reason they became an Uber driver. It was incredibly persuasive and I went into the polling place. These are serious progressives. Um, and I went into the polling place uh, ready to vote yes on it. And mm -hmm. then I couldn't do it Yeah, <laughs> and I voted no. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it seemed it was hard. It was tricky because it did seem to take some freedom of choice in what in a gig economy that that seemed to appeal to drivers. But literally every progressive organization said vote no, including mm -hmm. the ACLU. The ACLU guided me in, in almost every one of these almost every one of these votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're not um, you're not alone in that. Uh, my assistant is also an Uber driver, which is how I met her, and she had told me that she is really a proponent of continuing to be able to enjoy this gig economy and to continue to drive as she wanted when she wanted. And so I, you know, I, I get it and I understand it, but at the same time, I just know it's so wrong how these companies are leveraging and exploiting people and paying them low nominal wages. But it sucks because these people are willing to accept that just so that they can scrounge to survive. And it should not be that way. And John, to the millions of dollars that they spent on advertising, 
it was disgusting opening the app and seeing them, yep. you know, throw it at you and say, "Hey, vote this way." And and when you just knew it was their way of avoiding uh, circumventing the law because it's already been ruled upon, but they are fighting so hard yeah. to change that. Yeah. And you know, these rideshare companies, they really do not want to have to do what they should do. Yeah. Yeah, and look, I don't, I don't have any doubt that there are people who feel the same way as those progressives or the driver you know. I would argue there's a way to do it so that you can work a couple of random hours and be a contractor. But for those who work full time, they should be treated as employees. I feel like we could work that out hypothetically. But what I do know is that Uber and Lyft and Grubhub and Postmates and all of that didn't spend all this money because they're very worried about people being obligated into working longer shifts. I don't think that's I don't think it was about freedom for the drivers. I really don't. I think it was in their economic interests, and 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 unfortunately, the ads are incredibly dishonest. They have this thing at the end of the ads where they show who is paying for them, which is up there for like two seconds, and it looks like it. It looks like it won. Uh, a couple of things uh, I'd like to uh, bring up. Uh, Dauphin County, uh, Harrisburg, this is from uh, a guy named Lewis Jacobson tweeted this, but it's been uh, quote tweeted here or it's included in the coverage from 538. Uh, almost all the votes are counted. Biden leads 53 45. In 2016, Clinton won at 49 46. Uh, he suggested that the, if rural counties uh, end up with margins similar to the ones they posted um, uh, here. But uh, anyway, that urban and, but urban and suburban ones move left, that, that that's going to be a win uh, for Joe Biden in Pennsylvania, which is obviously uh, uh, gigantic and huge. Uh, Trump tweeted, by the way, mm. uh, tweeted, um, uh, we are up big. That was it. That was the whole tweet. Um, this first one <laughs> of the night. Uh, uh, and uh, it's inspirational. Um, uh, Biden uh, said, this is all from Katie Gluck, uh, the New York Times, in, uh, uh, if she's in Wilmington. Uh, Biden said uh, Kamala Harris will speak tomorrow. He spoke very briefly, projected optimism, even as many Democrats are deeply anxious about the results so far. He said, uh, in addition to saying we believe we're on track to win this election, he said we're going to win Pennsylvania. And he got out there, I mean, it may, he did it before Trump. That's a. Uh, that's yeah, a, that's something. That was good, but I mean, Jank talks about strength, right? That was, you know, he didn't say, "Well, we don't know. I'm not going to say anything." They were like, that's "No, good, that's here's true. the deal: we're winners. We're going to win." Really fast, I want to give you the full Trump tweet because no, that it wasn't just "We're up big." No, it was more. No. Uh, we're up big, <gasps> but they are trying to steal the election. There we go. We will never let them do it. Votes cannot be cast after the polls are closed. Well, they haven't. Well, been. they haven't been. Good and news. They won't be. Good news, Don. Nobody's talking oh, about Don, that. You know what? You're going to be so pleased because uh, that hasn't happened. So, are you good? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and of course, a lot of his fans in the, the replying to it that yeah, that's true. No, no, that's not. That doesn't happen. Well, no, happen. it's fine. That's you shouldn't true. count any votes that were cast after the polls closed. <laughs> I'm for that. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.